Join us for our final leg of the Lintang series. Immerse yourself in Dai culture and experience the celebrations of this warm and hospitable ethnic minority. All this coming up on Travelog. Luckily for us, We've been fortunate enough to be invited by Mr. Jing to attend one of his friend's performance of a traditional local Dai dance. In fact, back in the day, Mr. Jing was even a well-known dancer himself. <音>是吧他吃饱以后他就叫的响在这这个位置上他他他这个声音就出不来哦就啪啪啪啪哦是吗嗯如果装这个那米饭就噔噔噔哦哦哦有不一样的听听不一样哦调音作用哦调音又来
I think. The dance is not so difficult to learn, which means anyone can join in, even me. This is the second phase of our Thai dance. And I'm almost there mastering it, I'm hoping. The Dai are some of the most hospitable people I have met and they're eager for all of us to learn about their dances, culture and food. I'm getting schooled in the way of the, the Buddhist beads. What catches my eye are the Buddhist tattoos on everyone's arms. These are for protection and good luck. The first one people get usually around five or six years old. Well, every village has its own temple and lucky Mr. Sai, this temple is pretty much in his backyard so he can literally hop, make his way across here for, for morning prayer. Hello. Uh, <laughs> this southern form of Buddhism, otherwise known as Hinayana Buddhism, arrived in Linsang during the Sui dynasty in the 6th century. For the Dai, the temple is the center of the community. Here, people will grow up, learn about their culture and Buddhism. It's also here that the adults can go, hang out, have a chat or even a couple of drinks during the day. This old monk here is over 90 years old and has spent his entire life in this temple. A couple of miles away, you'll find Gongyi Fosu Temple. The reason we come here is to get up close and personal with the monks and to find out what life is like for the children that live there. The most respected members of Dai society are monks or were monks in the past. Children are initiated into temple life at a young age, undergoing a very strict daily routine. Wake up is at 5 a.m., followed by prayer, breakfast and classes. Free time is limited and tasks like cleaning and maintaining the grounds are handed out to keep the kids busy and to instill discipline. For many of the children, these are the first formative years of their education. During our time at the temple, we notice that the kids speak very softly Silence is golden, as they say. Hinayana Buddhism, which is sometimes referred to as small wheel Buddhism, came to China via Myanmar. This form of Buddhism closely resembles and is connected to Dai's daily lives. We end our tour of the temples at the largest temple in Mengding. When we arrive, we meet the head monk who's been given the honor of representing the Dai in Sri Lanka for a Buddhist festival.
Join us as we discover an ancient dye paper making village. Immerse yourself in the festivities of the Dye Water Festival and enjoy the culinary delights in Mengding. All this coming up on Travelog. If you're in Mengding, I definitely recommend you'd head over to the Dai village of Jinkang. Here, you can find an entire village exclusively focused on one thing, paper making. Wow, this is serious stuff. This is one of China's four great inventions. The traditional way, original way, which they still have in this Dai village of paper making. Me and Paper Lady got a bit of an African beat going there together. <laughs> right now, what we need to do, part of the process is to get the fibres to be shorter so that they can interlink with each other and can later on float up in the water more easily and create the, that, that much wanted sheet and which we can then dry out later and call paper. <laughs> Seems like she's trying to get a really thin layer of Layer, layer of strands and try to make it as smooth as possible. It's quite a delicate process really. This method of paper making has been passed down from generation to generation, from mothers to daughters. Whilst the men were away fighting wars, the females would need a way to make a living in the event that their husbands wouldn't return home. Paper making allowed them to make a little money and thus survive. Oh, wow. Very nice. There you have it. This is one of the final parts where we hope to make this paper a reality. Dry it out in the sun. I'm looking forward to see the results later on. I'm just chilling with my favourite ladies in, in this <laughs> dye paper making village and uh, actually one, once the paper is dried um, it will go on the market and will cost about one RMB. Uh, but what's really amazing about it is that in, the an in ancient times and still to this day it was really highly in demand. Uh, people would use uh, would really want this paper to wrap the, the, the famous tea in Lintang called Puar Tea and also Buddhist monks would also highly value this paper. They'd write their sutras on it. Uh, and this is pretty much the finished product right here. Get a look at that. Wow. Well, from paper making village to local dye homes. This lucky man, this is his house and uh, he's actually <laughs> been building the house so everyone's been invited around and you know there's going to be food on the table and uh, a lot of a lot of celebration coming up. <laughs> Uh, 
there's nothing quite like your next door neighbor's new house to get one excited, start celebrating. Just trying to help work the way I can. Oh, what is this? Take a just some Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh my God! Oh, sure, ma. Sure, ma. Ah, the whole place, the whole town, all the villagers are coming and celebrating their good friend's new house. Oh, ni hao, ah, shi zhe li ya, zuo 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 fan ma. Oh. Yeah, the food's not here. False trail, false trail. Uh, 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 we've got the queue ladies lining up with all their... Getting ready. Oh. This is where all the food is. That looks delicious. Mm, and it smells great too. Oh. We got some of the traditional sticky dai, dai rice. Oh. Ah, it's real community spirit here. Everyone helping everyone, everyone happy, and then eventually everyone drinking and eating. Nah, Sanghani. Sanghani is your name. Sanghani is your name. Oh, yeah, there's beer there <laughs> under the table. Oh, la 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 la. Oh, pull out lots of dishes, lots of traditional. Dye dishes. They look absolutely appetizing. This is Swan Ro. This is Mr. Jing's favorite. Actually, if, there's, if, if he's eating and there's no Swan Ro, he is, you can see he's miserable. I've seen it before, trust me. Uh, Swan Ro, Xi Hua Ma. It's quite a cool celebration. The act of pouring water is a form of religious ritual that is widely believed to wash away bad luck. In fact, the more water is splashed on someone, the luckier he or she will be in the coming Dai New Year. If you really want to see the authentic Dai water celebrations, then you won't get more authentic than in Nintang. Just when you thought the celebrations couldn't get even bigger, eat your food, then they start splashing water all over you for dessert. Here in Lintang, you certainly won't have any commercialized events, especially in Mengding. So I highly recommend you come here before tourism has its wicked way with this sleepy little town. Well, our two weeks long journey in southern Linsan has been an epic adventure. We immersed ourselves in the culture of some of Yunnan's most colorful ethnic minorities. This was an unforgettable journey. But hey, like all good things, 
has got to come to an end. Guys, wow. Well, I can't tell you just what an amazing place Lintang is. There's been so many ups and there's been so many downs and at the end of it, you know, you just come out feeling so refreshed. It's a magical place, a hidden wonderland in the mountains. I hope you enjoyed the show. I've just got one more thing to do before I go, which is to get Mr. Sai. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Mr. Sai. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'll see you next time, guys. See you next time on Travelog. Ha, 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 ha.